Hello, hi, it's me. Uh, I have a bit of a different video today. I'm going to share some ADHD hacks that I have tested out and tried for myself and I feel like they work for me so I thought I'd just share with you and you can take or leave, try or not. And if these work for you, that's great. If they don't work for you, bummer. That sucks, but hopefully there are some other things that might be able to work for you. This is a little different to my usual content, so if you've happened to just come across this video, I'll just say I'm Steph. Usually I make things to do with sewing and making, but I'm also autistic and have ADHD, and so that kind of comes into a bit of my content sometimes. So hello, and if you want to see some other sewing things, then make sure you check out my other videos. And I like to think that this is a lovely space where there's a lovely supportive community of lots of different kinds of people. We all kind of have similar sort of brains, maybe, or maybe we don't. I actually planned to film this months ago. Can you tell I have ADHD? I just haven't done it yet. I also was like, oh, maybe I'll record that video today. And then I totally forgot that uh, all of the things that I thought about. So I think that this is not, this wasn't something that was on my tips initially to begin with, but I'm going to add it right now off the cuff. So I think that ADHD hack number one is just to write stuff down with a physical paper and pen, or if you're committed to being a digital paperless person, that's great. But just put it all in the one spot. I feel like people have different notebooks for different activities and different reasons and stuff. Uh, mostly I just write everything down in my main day-to-day -day bullet journal thing that I keep, which looks kind of like this. I actually bought a handbag big enough so that it fits inside so I can carry it everywhere with me. It's A5 journal. I set it up each week. Oh, there's a bit of fluff on there. I try and set it up each week. If I don't set it up, then I kind of feel like my brain's all over the place. I tried a different format this week. Any sort of thoughts that I have, anything that I need to remember, I just write it in here. And then hopefully it translates elsewhere. The other thing is if I ever have ideas for videos, then I write it in my OneNote app on my phone because that looks to my computer. And so then if I happen to be on my computer or on my phone, those things start to sync and that's really handy. That was unplanned tip number one. Next hack that I will share with you that has totally changed my life is to do with organization in the fridge. So let's go to the fridge. Okay. Here I am at my fridge. My whole house is really messy at the moment too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover that in a minute. But the, the best hack ever that I learned somewhere on the internet is to rearrange your fridge. And you know how you usually have veggies and stuff in the bottom drawer and then sauces and things like exist either in the door or on the shelf or something? Just flip it around. I learned this somewhere. I don't know, put all your sauces in the bottom drawer where the vegetables usually go and get forgotten about and turn into mush. Uh, there's probably something in here that needs to get thrown out anyway. And then put your fresh fruit and vegetables or whatever you need in the door. And that way, every time you open the fridge, you'll see, oh, that's right. I need to use up that celery or I need to use up that cabbage or I need to make sure I throw that thing out because when you need a sauce, you know what sauce it's gonna be. So then you just go to the sauce drawer and find it. It doesn't need to be in front of your face every time you open the fridge. It doesn't need to be the main quick access things. Make the quickest access thing the thing that you always forget to use. I bought those little organization trays from the, what in Australia we call the $2 shop, which I think in North America you'd call the dollar store. It's the shop where you go and buy those random bits and pieces that you don't want to spend too much money on. And that just kind of flattened out the ridges that are on the bottom of that. Um, little vegetable crisper drawer and that sorted out the sauces because sauces like never go off either so if you forget about them it doesn't matter if you buy three bottles of hoisin sauce they can just go in the sauce drawer I'm spending a lot of time on the floor today let me just tidy up my bra so the next hack is just to go easy on yourself in terms of tidying so often we see a beautiful pictures and videos of YouTubers' houses where they're all neat and tidy and lovely and beautiful and aesthetic. And I just gotta say, give yourself a fucking break. You don't need to live like that. If your house is a little messy, that's fine. For me, I go through phases where I'm like, just I just can't cope with putting stuff away. And so the mess just piles up and eventually it gets too much, autistic brain kicks in and then I start tidying. So you, I kind of do what I call a tidying blitz. It, um, so like, for example, it's 21 past one right now. Just go to the nearest half hour and just see how much you can tidy in that time. Just call it a tidying blitz. 
sometimes I'm like, all right, it's quarter to six. I'm just gonna see how much I can put away until six o'clock and then yeah, you just like tidy bit by bit rather than trying to tackle and solve every single bit of tidying because it is um, common to get caught in one of those like tidying extravaganzas where you must clean every single inch of your house. So yeah, go easy on yourself and just tidy when you can. Tidy when your energy is there to do it. Start to be satisfied with just doing enough. I've forgotten what the next thing is, so I need to go find my phone and figure that out. Oh, I don't know if this is super... Let me find some better lighting. You can see all this mess in the background that I just don't want to deal with. Okay, let's talk about safe foods. I don't know if this is um, an ADHD thing or an autism thing, but I would say that if there are certain things that you need to do in order to feel regulated and in order to get done what you need to get done, then start embracing those things and make them a normal part of your life. Start to do them in front of other people. Start to just own the fact that maybe you need to eat a certain thing at a certain time of day. Maybe you need to go through certain routines in order to get started with something or wrap something up. ADHD, I know that it's very common to get time blind and get caught in a trap of well, not a trap, but just to get caught in your own thoughts or caught in your own activities, whatever you're doing. And I would say that just make sure that you, when you are not in those phases, that you take a little bit of time to set yourself up so that you don't become completely depleted. Part of that is probably making sure that you have enough of your safe foods or go-to foods that you can have readily accessible in your house or wherever you need them so that when you are getting into that point where you're feeling depleted, you can just easily access those things. And I know that some of us, if we've had certain preferences throughout our lives, we would have been shamed for that. And we might've been told that that's weird, that's abnormal, that's not something that is like appropriate. I think if it, if you need to, then start normalizing those practices for yourself in a safe place, maybe solo or maybe with a close friend or your partner or someone who you feel like you can be yourself around and do those things and then start to build confidence in doing those sorts of behaviors outside of that safe environment, whether that's eating certain things or stimming in a certain way and just sort of normalizing that that need to have either stimulation while you're trying to concentrate, just try and normalize that for yourself. And hopefully that can just make a little bit more space in the world for you to be able to be comfortable to just be you without needing to mask too much. This is Terence, my turtle. He keeps me company. He's also very stimmy and I like him. So I'm gonna hold him while I do this last little bit. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that the last hack that I have, <sighs> The last thing, the last hack is medication. If you have the opportunity, if it is within your means to access a formal diagnosis and with that medication, I highly, highly, highly recommend you give it a try. I know that I'm gonna maybe get attacked for saying this sort of stuff, but I am an advocate for taking medication that helps you function in order to get done what you need to get done. I was only diagnosed about a year and a half ago and I started taking medication, just the lowest dose of the like entry level medication and it changed my whole existence. I was diagnosed autistic about a year before I was diagnosed with ADHD and there is a big overlap between the two. But I know that some people can have ADHD without being autistic, so everyone's experience is different. I found that as I processed my aut autism diagnosis and I learned to be more my authentic self, I was still struggling with a lot of uh, anxious thoughts and an anxious mind. And then I started reading more and more about ADHD and the fact that for women and, and other people too, but very commonly in girls and in women, the hyperactivity element of ADHD is not necessarily a physical hyperactivity, but more of a psychological hyperactivity. And so for someone who might have previously been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, as I was, I think that it's actually more to do with having a hyperactive mind. There is definitely this sort of stigma attached to conditions that are not physical that require medication. That's like, if you have depression and you need to take antidepressants, or if you have ADHD and you need to take ADHD medication, if this was a physical issue, 
if that you were born with, say you had type 1 diabetes and you needed to have insulin to regulate your body so that it could function on a physical level. If you were to deny that person that medication, they're going to die. It's They're not going to be able to support life in their body. Now think about the person who has depression and whose brain is unable to produce the right amounts of stuff, whatever it is, serotonin I think, their brain is physically unable to do that. Just as an ADHD brain is physically unable to regulate its dopamine levels. You're not going to deny the diabetic the diabetic medication. You're not going to not take an antihistamine if you get hay fever. What I'm trying to say is we need to kind of normalize medication for non-physical, non-physical stuff. And I know that mental health and those kinds of things suffer stigma a lot in our society. And I think that we need to normalize um, medicating those sorts of things if it means that someone is able to function at, you know, for want of a better ways, in a normal way. That's what ADHD medication does. It helps you to regulate your dopamine levels in your brain so that then you're, you're not seeking out the other dopamine hit or those other things that you've been, you've been seeking a stimulation in order to get that same regulation. Don't be ashamed to take medication for helping your brain function as a brain should really function. I already started recording the last thing and I remembered that I needed to, there was one thing that I forgot. So, rewind. Here we are, back in the bedroom. Um, the other thing that, the other tip that I can give you is that lovely saying, out of sight, out of mind. I think that that rings true for ADHD people more than the general population because if there's something that's not in our sight, we will 100% forget about it. So if there is something that you need to remember to do or whatever, make sure it's in sight. It's in your sight line. For me, I forget that I have this lovely earring collection that I like to wear. So what I did is I went to Muji and I got this plastic clear earring holder thingy look there's you in the camera that means that I can look at my earrings every day and if I need to find and wear a pair of earrings I can see it right in front of my face without needing to remember that these things exist I have plenty of other jewelry though that I put in to like jewelry boxes beautiful things this one's from my grandma I love it it's very dusty though because I need to clean the apartment. Um, but I forget, I forget that this exists and I forget that there are things inside that I could wear. So yeah, that's one example. But if you need to remember certain things, if there's a certain routine that you need to nail, write it down, put it somewhere visible, because if it is out of sight, it's out of mind. If it's in sight, it's more likely to be in mind. It's not 100% foolproof, it's not guaranteed but it is better than completely, completely forgetting. Okay, so I can't remember where I got to with wrapping up, but basically they, these are some tips, some hacks that I tried out after seeing them on the internet. Some of them worked for me. There are other things that I probably tried that didn't work for me that I now can't remember. If you try any of these and they work, let me know. If they don't work, also let us know. If there are other things that you have tried that work that I don't know yet, I'm in the comments. It's fun to share. It's great to, to hear from you all. I love it. I love this place, this lovely corner of the internet where the, my audience is mostly just the most wholesome time and you guys are all fantastic and I'll see you soon for some more sewing. Bye.